On to the final restoration candidate of the series. And we're in Birmingham, greatest city of the Midlands and pioneer in the laying of the foundations of all things intellectual school. In 1870, there had been a very important education act. It was influenced by the ideas that had been tried out in Birmingham by the mayor, Sir Joseph Chamberlain. He wanted schools for everybody. Lots of schools. Big schools. These grand schemes laid the foundations for our modern education system. Nevertheless, 400 years before Chamberlain, Brummy parents were just as convinced of education's importance. And tonight's final candidate is certainly a testament to this. In 1629, a story I think we might recognise was emerging here in King's Norton. The local grammar school was becoming a failing school. The parents were alarmed because it was bumping along at the bottom of ye olde school league table and they decided to take matters into their own hands. <laughs> But this was no PTA we're talking about here. This was a raging lynch mob. As might be expected, this mob did a rather good job of ousting the teacher they felt was responsible. They can't have been very happy when they saw his replacement was only 18. But Thomas Hall, Puritan, cleric and bibliophile, was due to have a profoundly positive influence on the children of King's Norton. Built in 1462, but derelict for over a century, Thomas Hall's old grammar school, along with its neighbour across the graveyard, the Saracen's Head, together make up the last restoration candidate you can vote to save tonight. We're sending Ptolemy and Marianne to Birmingham to see what they make of King's Norton's two medieval gems. Doesn't really feel like Birmingham at all, does it, Ptolemy? And here ahead of us is the little grammar school. Oh, the schoolmaster talked here from 1629 to 1662. The colour and appearance of this building would have been quite different, wouldn't it? And we wouldn't have had those cementy grey panels in between the timbers. The whole lot probably would have been lime washed. You wouldn't have had these blackened timbers because, of course, there was this absolute fetish for blacking up timbers. Well, that was 19th century, wasn't it? In the 19th wasn't it? century. Well, that's a beautiful design, isn't it? It's lovely tracery in oak. Yeah, that's you don't see that, that very that often, do you? Out. Despite the chocolate box good looks, the old grammar school has just been put on the buildings at risk register, and the first signs of why are found downstairs. Rather a lot of damp and condensation on the ceiling. All in all, a bit of a mess, really. Big crack over that window over there. Presumably a rotten lintel. Well, I imagine upstairs is going to be better. Let's hope so. Oh, this is more like it. Wow. Look at that window. That window is absolutely Stunningly wonderful. Stunningly beautiful. Isn't this lovely to see? Extraordinary mullioned window out of timber. I've never seen anything like it. And then panelling made out of the old Georgian box pews around the edge of the room. Look, isn't at that this. lovely? Look at Ptolemy. that. Isn't that the ultimate desk? Gosh, that's the schoolmaster's oh, desk. Oh, it's fantastic. Good heavens. That is so beautiful. I hate graffiti, but I love old fashioned graffiti where it's properly letter cut with serifs. Do you think that old Thomas Hall appreciated these serifs? Do you think he sat Who has put graffiti on my desk? <laughs> Don't you laugh here, girl! We won't have girls in this school anyway. <laughs> you can imagine it. Don't his hat in the corner. God. Such a beautiful room, full of <laughs> such anger. Thomas Hall's classroom was run with an atmosphere of strict discipline. He believed that the best way of drumming in a good education was through attention to the classics and the birch. Hall's regime turned the school around. It transformed unruly boys into fine students, dreaming of university. Gosh, look at this. You just imagine those long classes 
and your eye would wander from the boring, boring banging on of that teacher to the beauty of that butterfly, and you think, gosh, I wish I could escape as well. It's clear from contemporary accounts of Thomas Hall that he was extremely well regarded, despite his austere manner. His pupils were getting unprecedented places at Oxbridge, and parents from across the country clamoured to send their children to this new centre of excellence. I mean, I think as I sit here, I mean, I realise that I'd really rather like to have come to school in a place like this. I mean, I can imagine myself sitting here and watching the light, you know, looking out and seeing the blossom and the, the passing of the seasons. All of these things are so important. I mean, education isn't just about learning the alphabet. It's all about developing a sense of civilization and place. And part of that is understanding heritage and history. And this building seems to absolutely embody everything that heritage, history and education offer, all combined into one really wonderful place to sit. Across the churchyard stands the school's sister building from the same period, the Saracen's Head. It's the second of our two buildings that make up this one restoration candidate. In Thomas Hall's time, this was the house of the royal bailiff. He would have looked after the king's affairs in the district. That is a fantastic building. Look at that. And this there's the old great. town pub. It's everything that an old country inn should be, isn't it? And in England, we just love timber frame buildings, don't we? We even make timber frame cars, Ptolemy. Oh, that's marvellous, <laughs> the Morris Minor. <laughs> you know what I love about timber frame buildings is that because they're, they're not rigid, they sort of develop that wonderful sort of undulation. It just sort of wobbles in and out. No one worries about it, you know, because it's timber, it moves, it's fine. Ah, oh, perfect a compliment to a building like this. <laughs> Like the school, the Saracen's head looks almost too pristine to be in danger. But the reality is that both buildings are at risk. Unsympathetic repairs using modern cement render in the early 20th century have caused the timber frames to rot and shrink. Of the two, only part of the Saracen's head is utilised as parish offices and community space. Good heavens. <laughs> An open hall. I mean, I thought that when we'd seen the grammar school, We'd seen everything, but not a bit of it. Look at this, it just goes on and on. Mind the gap. <laughs> Isn't this a marvellous room? During its 500-year life, the Saracen's head will have seen many changes to its layout. Originally, it's thought to have held three bedrooms, the most important of which was the Queen's parlour, where, during the Civil War, Henrietta, wife of Charles I, came to stay. The 20th century, however, has scarred its interior. But nevertheless, the Saracen's head has its admirers. Joan Acton loved it so much, she held her wedding reception here in 1968. Both the school and the Saracen's head are very important to her. I belong to the youth club that was, um, that met in this building. And um, it was a very vibrant youth club in my uh, teenage years and many of us found our partners in the youth club. I certainly did, and we married, and we married in the church, and we had our reception in this building. You actually feel you're part of living history because this building is here. But only just. The ravages of time are taking their toll, and the building along with the old grammar school is slowly deteriorating. If these buildings are not restored, it would mean a great loss to a great many people. If the Saracen's Head hadn't existed, I wouldn't have had so much fun. I wouldn't have had so much enjoyment. I may not have met my husband. One never knows. <laughs> the old grammar school and the Saracen's Head have faced each other across the churchyard for over 500 years, and like old friends, are asking to be considered together for your vote. What do Marianne and Ptolemy make of them? Well, I think both the buildings really put the place in, into context, don't they? And they give, they give it a real identity. They remind us that we've been here a very long time. Someone once said to me, old buildings don't subside. They simply find a more comfortable way to stand. When you look along the elevation of the Saracen's head, you just feel that, don't you? 500 years of standing. 
and it's beginning to feel tired and it desperately needs a little bit of help. Without schools like this, we wouldn't have you know, had the educated people, we wouldn't have developed the inventions that we all had, we wouldn't have travelled the world, wouldn't have had that inquiring mind that this country had. So, you look back at that little form room and that little scratch desk, and it's rather splendid to see